Hey there, my name is Shane Craddock and this is the Inner Edge podcast where I share a different take on how to lead and live a sustainable high performance life. Over the course of different episodes, I'm going to challenge the belief that tension, stress and struggle are essential to success and creativity. My experience is that there's an easier way, there's a better way and indeed there's an essential way that we need to explore for the times that we live in. So let's go ahead, let's jump in and explore. Hey there. Uh, Every so often, if you're regularly listening to this uh, Inner Edge podcast, you know that every so often I take time to do something a little bit different and I interview somebody that I respect and think has got something to contribute. Uh, Very often, they may not be in the major mainstream, but in certain contexts, they'd be well known. And uh, my guest today is probably in the latter context, I would say, in certain certain contexts, he'd be very well known, particularly in Ireland. And uh, his name is Tom Coleman, and he would describe himself as, uh, I think in his words, a passionate health advocate. So he's a, he's a qualified health scientist. I would have originally come across Tom, I heard him on the radio, um, and it was in relation to sleep, and he would have been, I suppose, brought on to speak as a sleep expert. And we're going to talk a little bit about sleep today. Now, there's many things that Tom can talk about because he really takes an overall uh, holistic view to your health, and in particular, working with leaders. Um, but the information we're going to share today will help anybody because he's worked across nutrition with health and sleep. And some of that comes in particularly at the start. He's worked with a lot of elite athletes and professional teams, but also then with high level executives. And um, we get into, um, I suppose, at the start, how he got into um, this area that he's in now. And then we kind of go for a little bit of a deep dive on sleep. And we take kind of an inner edge angle on it, as I hope you would expect. So I suppose a lot of this is driven by my own curiosity, but I also had Tom come in uh, a few months ago, my annual retreat, the Thrive Experience, um, and I brought Tom in to speak to the group, and they're really, really connected with the information he was sharing because he comes out of very much from a practical point of view, but also backed up by the latest research and science. And uh, yeah, so I think let's just get into the interview, and I'll just come back at the very end and summarize some of the things that I took out of that conversation. So Tom Coleman. Tom Coleman, welcome to the Inner Edge. Thank you very much for having me, Shane. Great to have you, Tom. Um, what? How do you describe what it is that you do? Mm, that's that's a good question. Um, what I do is demystify sleep and health for people. I feel like there's so much out there now. Uh, around health, around um, well-being, and around sleep, and people are encountering so many different issues around it that they come to me, and it's 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 like it's it's all kind of tangled up. And what I do is kind of break things down for people, simplify it into daily actionables that will ultimately improve not only their sleep, but their health, their life their level of satisfaction, their energy levels, all of that kind of stuff. Okay. Yeah. And obviously, look, okay, that makes a lot of sense. And I suppose that's my experience of you as well, that you, I think we're living in a world where there's an abundance, an overabundance of information on every subject, but particularly health and well-being. Um, And I think it can be uh, very confusing to people. And you kind of need trusted people to kind of help you navigate through the fluff and the stuff that's really style over substance and try and get to the meat the substance that actually works so okay that makes sense so before we get into some of the maybe the way you see things in terms of health and obviously this is the inner edge so we're kind of taking an inner aspect on leadership and performance life but how did you get into what you do now how did you like what was the journey where did you start and what were the key moments where you moved into this um Curiosity has always been at the core of, of of who I am, and I when I even when I started my degree course, which was health science and physiology, so it's a very broad course. So I wasn't kind of sure uh, what I really wanted to do, and I I started my journey on this course and um, qualified, got my degree as a health scientist, done another year in public health and health promotion, so kind of understood the pathway. Uh, for creating kind of ultimately behavior change. 
And then I, I, I was very much into nutrition at the time and felt it was like a kind of magic bullet. Uh, that was about 12 years ago. So I set up a nutritional consultancy business where I work with a chef. Again, to give people practical kind of advice on, on how to make delicious food healthy or healthy food delicious. And mm-hmm. quite quickly, I, I got to work with athletes and um, from, from many different backgrounds and quite high level. And then the realization was that, look, it's, it's really about enhancing recovery for, for, uh, for these athletes and for me to help them to promote uh, recovery. So I, I started to obsess about that. And I asked the question, well, what is the biggest impact on recovery? And the answer to, the, to that came back asleep one dark night when I was researching. And it, it blew my mind because it's so simple that we, and we don't think about it unless, unless we miss out on it. And so my obsession with sleep began then to find out what's happening while we sleep, what type of impact is it having in all the areas of our lives. And from that, I got to work with um, a company in the US who, who I suppose, not designed, but they adapted uh, equipment from the US military that was designed for their fighter pilots to measure mental fatigue. Because for a fighter pilot, milliseconds, microseconds make the difference between life and death and mm-hmm. the, the loss of a pilot. So um, they kindly sent me over five units and eventually 10 units. And then I was analyzing um, Irish rugby players' sleep and mental fatigue patterns and many other high profile kind of sports people. So and um, that's my journey. And then for the last seven or eight years, I've, I've been in the corporate sector. I've done a lot of work with people individually. Um, I've been involved in research on sleep in corporate Ireland. And I suppose that's the, the journey has taken me there. My 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 interest has been re- renewed again and again in, in not just sleep and understanding deeply the type of things that impacted like stress. Mm. So so quite a lot of kind of digging in that area. And um, I'm, I'm kind of coming at it from my physiology background mm. um, and, and put, put, putting it all together. So just as the uninitiated, I mean, there's lots, there's lots in what you just said that I, I have a list of questions now that are popping up in my own <laughs> head. But from what you said there, just at the un, uninitiated, what is physiology? What's, what, what does that mean? What do you study? So physiology is kind of understanding uh, the functions and processes of the human body. Okay. Um, at, at different levels, but um, quite simply, you know, how the body works. How the body works. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Well, I suppose that maybe that's why I think when, when we first connect, maybe that's why we have a, a kind of an overlapping interest because I guess I'm always curious about how does the mind work? How does the inner world work? <laughs> so you're obviously talking about it in the, in the overall context. How does the body work in terms of creating good, better health? Now, you're obviously talking about working with elite performing athletes there. Um, well, what, what, like, what's health to you? What's, what is health? It, there's, a, there's a bit of a contradiction in me working with, with, with athletes because health is balance. Okay. Um, whereas working with an athlete, you're, you're pushing right to that envelope of, of breakdown. You're, you're, you're looking for that absolute line of, of, of pushing a system and systems to the limit of their capacity. Whereas health is about balance. Uh, now, sometimes within health, you might have to do things that, seem out of balance but ultimately for me it's not about how you look it's and i i I recognize this very early in my career because while i was in college i worked in in the hospital and i worked in i ended up in cardiac care working as a care assistant and i seen as many people skinny people coming in with heart attacks as i did with people who perceived to be overweight so health is more than what we perceive to be superficially um, it's it, it's much deeper and it has to involve the mental aspect, the emotional aspect. It's, it's a very holistic kind of approach. Yes. What, what one appears on the outside or, or their life indeed looks like has very little often to do with what's going on on the inside. So, I mean, look, I mean, I think I'm curious now about this. I mean, a lot of the times they would, I, I'd have different types of clients myself. Mm. And some of them, some of them, would be at probably what you might have called even the elite level in business. And yeah. I think a similar mindset to an elite athlete that they will push it mm. right to the limit, but often at the consequence of their overall health. Yes. Right? So, and yeah. 
What I'm wondering is, did you see the same thing with elite athletes? I did. I seen. I've seen that with athletes uh, where they would use an optimum recovery strategy to push themselves even harder. Mm. Um, at the where to the point where their their long term health uh, may suffer. Mm. Um, it's not even to say. Like I wouldn't say that's the best way to go about it. If we if we if we look at Paul O'Connell. Um, he 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 done a podcast recently, and off where he, he he spoke about he was carrying um, injury and potential injury there. So he he was just much more clever and efficient in how he approached training and the game. And he said during that period of time, he played the best rugby of his life. So even though physically he wasn't all he wasn't at his maximum uh, potential and capacity cognitively and mentally he was and so we, we we can kind of learn from that as well it's about for me it's about kind of efficiency and effort um so within the whether that be from a business uh, sense or a physiological sense how can i switch between the systems really effectively so i'm not burning myself out or wasting energy can you say there how can i switch between the systems what systems so if we talk about um as humans, we're, we kind of have a couple of settings where we're ready for action and we are ready to perform and our full bodily function is set up like this over 24 hours. And this is where the sleep and the circadian rhythm and the body clock come in. So we are creatures who, through design or whatever else, we are designed to be active early in the day um, and our, we have the chemicals to match that. So we have a higher capacity for for work and stress earlier in the day. Mm-hmm. Um, so the system of being alert and turned on to any potential uh, gain for our from an evolutionary perspective or threat. So fight or flight, a little bit of stress, uh, really good that we can perform well, we can get things done. So we're in the switched on state. So that's one state. And we see people who are very good at that, like the typical example in the, in the in the world of business might be Steve Jobs, right? Switched mm. on, very tuned in uh, and everything else. Then the ability to to switch off, incredibly important. And I, I feel that a lot of people who've had huge success, this is the area where they fall down. Right? Yeah, well, I, well, I can tell you that's absolutely true. It's, it's, it's knowing how and when to ramp down activity. And here's Here's the example I give you from nature, which I love. It's kind of like if you think about a lion, the lionesses. They sit around much of the day in a really chilled out, relaxed state, eating, playing, doing other things, sleeping a lot. And they they look so relaxed. And then when it comes to action, they are so incredibly switched on. They have their laser focus. They have they're able to go between those two systems of fight or flight, rest and digest. And I feel like the way society is is now and technology, the perfect storm has arisen where mm. so many of us with the pressures and demands were in the, we're spending too much time in fight or flight. And that's going to be detrimental in the long term. Mm, that makes total sense. And just for what it's worth, I would see the same thing. Mm. I would see the same thing. Um let's go back a step. So when you were talking about the elite athletes, like I I you know what I find is that a lot of the people I would deal with, say leadership or business people, they're very much attracted to those stories about elite athletes in sport. Yeah. And actually sport has kind of done a favor to the business world and life in general by increasing the awareness of things like what you're talking about, because people mm-hmm. pay attention. Um, and even things like mindset and psychology. Yeah. But a distinction I would see, you know, between an elite athlete, like there's certain elements that overlap, but an elite athlete's life. I think for me is easier actually because they can be more linear and quite, they can be quite narrow in their focus. Whereas a business person has more complexity would be my experience, more complexity yeah. that's going on around them. Yes. Um, and generally they can't like an, an elite athlete will spend the majority of their working day focused on either training or recovery. And mm-hmm. then there's a small percentage on performance and when they're actually yeah. in the game or a race Yeah. Whereas with a business person, that's not the case. In many ways, you might get no training, 
uh, mm. the, the recovery is, is compromised. So I suppose what I was hearing as you were saying was there's probably some underlying principles or fundamentals that are true to both, mm-hmm. but just used in a different context. And so what I'm wondering is for you, like what, what would be the kind of the grounding fundamentals or principles that you would think are there uh, for the average person as opposed to, and I'm, I'm not saying the average person, just maybe, maybe more somebody who's just not an elite athlete with that kind of level of focus or flexibility to kind of really zone in on their game. Yeah. And look, I, I, I firstly have to agree because one of the one of the, the best coaches in the world at one time said the difference between those who make it and those who don't is the guy who can deal with the boredom of uh, you know doing that training on a daily bit consistent basis. They have yeah. they have um, systems set up that don't that are quite rigid. They know their training plan for the next six weeks, and they, they, everything is kind of decided for these guys in a lot of cases. So. <laughs> You, I think, hundred percent right. The, the, the variables are very different for for a business person. So um, that's the first thing. The the principles which I would kind of look at, I would say, are um, firstly mindset is is huge. It's that narrative of how it sets the tone for literally everything. Mm. Our attitude, on our, our approach, what we think, our filter. So w- what's your mindset? And again. That that has to be flexible. I feel this mm. is certain, at certain points that 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 may have to change, or you 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 will encounter difficulty. Um, discipline. It's a funny one because I'm I'm in business ten years and I I don't have that great a discipline. I feel I, I feel like I've, I failed <laughs> I, I failed more than most when it comes to just when it comes to you know business and um, nutrition, food, fitness, all that kind of stuff. So I think it's a, maybe a skill that. That we uh, uh, develop. I think our attitude to failure is a huge one. Um, how we view uh, failure, how we how we deal with with, with failure, N- knowing knowing when when to push and when to. And this is about the systems again. It's knowing when to push and when to take a foot off and do do a re reevaluation. Like at what point am I going to let this go? And as you know. As someone, it depends on the team you have around you. If you have a team, if you're an entrepreneur by yourself, then that's a, a tough question um, mm-hmm. to to answer. So the the kind of the appraisal, the appraisal, the mindset, um, how you deal with with failure, um, those type of things are can 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 really match around in, in the world of sport, in the world yeah. of personal development, of business. That makes sense. That makes sense. Well, then let, let's zone in on something you referred to earlier on in terms of, you know, when you're initially working with the elite athletes. And I know obviously you work a lot with organizations now, leaders in different contexts around improving their performance, their overall well-being and performance and health. But you mentioned sleep. And mm-hmm. honestly, I mean, we're, we're recording this in November 2023, right? If you'd asked me five years ago, um, would people sleep? With all the science coming out and all the research and all the books, exposing information, will people's sleep be getting better? If we were talking 2018, I would have said, mm-hmm. yeah, by then, everybody will have it all rock solid. It's going to be incredible. But actually, it's getting worse. Yes. Yeah. What I'm seeing. And mm-hmm. I'm mean, all the time. Now, I'll have my own take on that. And I think we've already kind of touched on it a little bit. But let's go back to the basics. And I know it kind of seems like logical. So I think, look, everybody knows sleep is important, right? Mm. Because if you get a bad night's sleep, it's just like, okay, I'm li- like you don't need to kind of see the research, but let's just lean into it a little bit. Mm. Why, why, Tom, is sleep so important? Sleep impacts, people say, ask me, does it impact this? Does it impact my cognitive ability? Does it impact my body fat? Does it impact? It literally impacts every aspect of how you work as a human. And we can we can we can look at that from a physical perspective when you talk about the tissue repair, the growth hormone, immunity, what happens to many people who 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 work so hard for so long, they break down. Very common that this happens at Christmas time, at holidays, yes, at the end of projects. Yes. I just get to hear, and then finally you have a few days off, and what happens? Boom, you get sick. And and let me explain that. What happens is when we're in stress response, our bodies are actually producing a lot more um, immune cells to fight off infection. And then 
when the stress goes, the body recognizes that and drops production of the immune cells, and then we get sick. And that's so the way to dovetail out of that is through exercise, right? That's the way to dovetail out of that. Um, why, why does exercise make such a difference there? Because at some level, exercise is fight or flight, but it's not got all the, co the complex cognitive difficulties and challenges of maybe uh, working as a project. It's a different type of stress. So that's that's the first thing. So with sleep, we, we, we need the, the chance for the body to repair the immune system. Uh, we, we restock immune cells while we sleep. So your body is, in, is preparing for the day while you sleep. Um, hormones, so for, for men, shall we say, you know, your testosterone levels will, will drop dramatically if we get less than five hours. To that of a man 10 years old. Um, right, so like a, yeah, it's, it's quite a lot. It's quite a huge, significant difference. From a psychological... Oh, sorry, Tom, just go back on that. So what, what is the difference between a man and a woman in that context? In sleep? So uh, from a hormonal perspective, when both yeah. men and women produce testosterone, yeah. um, so, um, and men also produce uh, estrogen as well. So yeah. th those are at a certain ratio to maintain uh, health. And, and if we miss out on sleep, the endocrine system that produces all the hormones goes kind of wobbly and we, we, we don't, it doesn't regulate properly and that causes disruption. So your, your hormones will be out of sync. You won't have the energy levels. You will be craving uh, foods, uh, certain foods, high energy foods the next day because you're, your ghrelin level can go up and that's hormone driven. Um, then from a psychological standpoint, uh, well, the first thing is uh, memory and um, how you embed wire memory. That's done at night during sleep. So um, you're you're literally not going to be able to remember as much or as well your, your previous couple of days or your few days. Um, your, you embed positive emotional experiences while you sleep. And you disassociate a stressful event. So we've you've had an argument with someone, you've had a discussion, you've you've conflict, something at work is happening. That night you fall asleep, you're in bed, maybe you're, you're mulling through it in your mind. When you sleep, your brain detangles that, stores away the stress. If you have sufficient sleep. If you don't, you don't, you, you don't get that. And so literally it changes your kind of your perspective and viewpoint on the world emotionally. Now, in terms of productivity, we know because this has been tested uh, any number of times by the likes of Harvard, how productive are you with eight hours sleep versus four hours sleep? Because famously, we've had people say, oh, it's a waste of time, you know. Yeah. And we can, we can say with 100% certainty, you're more efficient, you're more productive, and you're sharper, your reflexes, your cognitive abilities are much better after eight hours sleep. Okay. So... Again, it's 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 huge the impact it has. And is it definitely eight hours? I know before I remember reading something there was something to do with between seven and eight, but is it is eight? Yes. Hours? Well, between seven and eight, absolutely. It's it, it's it, it is personal. Some people are fine at six hours, um, some people seven, some people eight, but generally the recommendation is between seven and eight. It's not yeah. very it's 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 not exactly you know, and that's down to sleep cycles and um yeah. Uh, personal as well and even like the quality of sleep so we talk about numbers here we talk about duration but like even the quality and maybe yes. people will be familiar with this you go to bed wired and tired exhausted yeah. you've a lot going on and then you just don't feel as though you've got that good yeah. quality sleep you, you, you might get sleep for eight hours but the quality of it hasn't been yeah. great so that comes into yeah. it again um let me chat let me allow you let me allow you to challenge my inner skeptic right okay so Shane does have an inner skeptic. I try to keep it at bay, but then obviously sometimes it's useful, Tom. So, um, cause you, you've challenged me to be fair and you challenged me quite well before actually on, we might get a chance. I don't know if we, if we will, but on cold water therapy, you know, so I think you're one of the main reasons that I would now take cold water showers in the morning. So you, you managed to kind of convince my skeptic. So it's good. I, I like to see my skeptic defeated. Um, sleep trackers, right? Yeah. Yeah. My skeptic is like, no shame, we're not getting one of those. And it's funny because I, I was talking to a couple of people recently who yeah. actually have, <laughs> they're obsessed with their sleep, but actually I know they've got worse sleep than me, but two of them, they literally had one sleep tracker on one arm <laughs> and another sleep tracker on the other arm. Now that, I know this is obsessive, but mm -hmm. I said, well, why do you have two? And he said, well, I'm just checking to make sure that, that you know, that one of them is right and they're not, like they're kind of consistent. 
But it was almost like to your point there of, you know, you, I know when I wake up, I know for my own body, if I've had a good night's sleep, I, I kind of know the yeah. feeling. Whereas yeah. I need a nap, but I remember saying to the yeah. guy, so this guy looks at his, whatever, the, I won't say the brand's names, whatever, but yeah. he looks at the thingy and says, that's what tells him if he had a good night's sleep or not. And, he, and I said, have you ever had a, had a sleep where you felt you had a great night's sleep, but you looked at the app and the data yeah. and it said you didn't go into REM enough, you know, yeah. you were a bit disrupted. And that kind of made you think, oh, oh no, I had a bad night's sleep. And so therefore now you're carrying that around in your head. Yeah. So I'm giving you permission now because I don't know your opinion yeah. on sleep trackers. What What is your view? So firstly, you, you might say to your friend with the two sleep trackers, the third <laughs> one is a, the third one is an order because if they're contradictory, <laughs> surely he needs a third. <laughs> <laughs> to be scientific about it, that's, that's a okay. Um, so uh, now I, I've worked I've worked with what is known as the gold standard of sleep trackers that aren't available to the general public. They're used by NASA and Harvard today to track sleep. They're not. Oh, pe- you know that people are listening to this and they're thinking, where can I get myself one of those? Talk to you? me. Talk to me. Oh, you really? Know, you sell them? Well, I don't sell them, but I, but, but I am the guy in Ireland that 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 deals with, with, with those trackers. And, and they're actually, they're not as expensive now as they were. They used to be about a thousand euros. Well, make sure, you, make sure you're on a commission, Tom, and we put a link yeah. in here. Yeah. But they're they're much cheaper now. Uh, but you okay. need a certain volume, and and if anyone contacts the company, they'll direct them towards me anyway. Um, so these are ninety four percent accurate when measured against the gold standard of sleep measurement, which is polysomnography, which is a hundred percent. Right okay. now, the the research on on the sleep trackers is this. Right, they're pretty good at telling us if we're awake or asleep. The accuracy level is about 85 to 90 percent. So pretty good. Um, the accuracy level then when it comes to sleep cycles or EM sleep stages of sleep drops down to as low as 40 to 50 percent. OK, so like the guy said in the movie, Shane, you know, 40 percent of the time, it's right every time. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, and you know what? What comes into this? There's a couple There's two other things that come into this, right? So. The, the accuracy of the sleep tracker when getting into the finer detail, very questionable, not very reliable. Personality type, right? We are so sensitive to sleep disruption that if I actually instruct someone and tell them to wake up at four o'clock in the morning, they will. Cortisol levels will peak. Um, so the personality type who are checking to make sure I'm hitting my targets, the type A personality, yes. um, the, you know, you, you need to back away from it because your brain will start you will entrain your brain to actually start waking up and checking to see your, your targets. Yes, yeah, I've seen that. And the other thing is something called RF sensitivity, radio frequency sensitivity. And you can look this up on the World Health Organization website. Certain, certain people are very sensitive because this device is constantly speaking to another device. And, right. tracking. and some people are sensitive to, to radio frequency waves and it can disrupt um, their sleep. So I used to have a, a tracker, and now I don't bother with a tracker. Yeah. I, it's, it's, it's almost like, here's the, here's the deal, focus on the process. Yes. Focus on all those things, and the sleep looks after itself. It's like the results are not up to me. I, my, my job is to look at the process. Um, okay. Because people do come to me all the time, and I just mostly tell them and can i ask you with regards to the this special fandangle mm-hmm. nasa one tom is that it does that have the rf issue as well or is it something you just wear temporarily just to kind of get a baseline on your sleep or what's the purpose it, it, you would need to wear it for three days before getting a baseline it's a predictive model of mental fatigue it gives the user um, a score out of 100 percent. so the fo- the user ha- has on its phone fo- has on their phone uh, a little app they can open and check. My mental um, capacity is, you know, 84%, and they can actually drag it forward in time and see that at 9 o'clock tonight, my, okay. um, it, it'll drop. Um, it, that, that is, it, it's pure, it, it doesn't look at heart rate, it doesn't look at, it, it's a pure actograph, meaning it tracks movement, 3D movement, three times per second. Um, so, um yeah, no, it's the algorithm, it's the software that costs all the money. 
Yeah, okay. It, it cost them about 30 million to develop this and it, it is very accurate. So it's in the software analysis that's, but you don't, you just see the, the, the front end mental fatigue uh, number, which correlates very well with, with um, reaction time, critical thinking, decision making, and actually physical fatigue as well. So did you yeah. get benefit? Did you get benefit from it? Um it 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 gives me a very accurate picture of somebody's um sleep. And 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 here's the thing with, with self-report. You spoke about self-reporting, but what yeah. is no self-reporting? I get people to, to kind of go with that. Now, sometimes that can be inaccurate. So I had a CEO who told me he had very disrupted sleep and I put one of these trackers on him for uh, a few weeks and found out that he had some of the best sleep I've ever seen. Very interesting. But half an hour before waking up every morning, there was a lot of movement. Okay. Like he had these perfect sleep cycles and then half an hour before waking every morning, he had all this movement. So his brain perceived it as very restless. Isn't that interesting? Know? And um, so that reassured him, that, that really reassured him. They're, they are, they are uh, useful, but... Again, it's it's just shining a light on your sleep. It's yeah. not actually doing anything to help it, you know. Well, and let's, let's, stay, let, let's stay with this if it's okay. So, I mean, like, first of all, we probably put a link to something around the NASA thing. In the yeah, show. sure. Oh, no, so we'll do that afterwards. Um, again, I was watching the time because, it, it, as it turns out, like I, I knew this would happen with you, Tom, that we'd have we'd be going down a rabbit hole and say, right, and we may as well stay here while we're at it because I think this is <laughs> sure. But okay. What are the common mistakes so that people make around sleep? And because there must be, I mean, like, there must be a top four or five. I know that there's a kind of a, what I'm hearing from you today is it's probably like a bit like my world. People, a lot of time, they just want techniques, but really it's about looking at the fundamentals around what's your approach. And then, as you said, and that this is where sport does overlap with businesses. Look, let's get clear on the outcome that you're looking for. And then let's create a process to drive towards and if we're not getting the outcome, we need to change the process. And it's a dance too. So I get so I get that. So what are the process elements you see, you know, that make the biggest difference to people? And maybe what are the common mistakes? So um I'm I'm so much into process and, and the basics. So you hit the nail on the head there, Shane. It's like I kind of so I kind of summarize it first. <laughs> I kind of say to people, look, if you're really struggling you don't know what's going on just go out into the garden all day no matter what the weather don't <laughs> just get out in the morning into that garden and do not come in only for food at lunchtime and when it gets dark and then have a warm shower and a, and a, and a, and a meal and you, you'll have no problem falling asleep so yeah. we are we are disconnected we have forgotten the basics we are trying to think our way out of it when we need to um take take some action and and, and that's like engage with the outside light. It's it's exceptionally powerful. Yeah. Um, work or or do some physical activity. Disconnect from the demands from the nerve from the mind from the you know go into the body and 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 focus on that. Stop looking for a fast solution. It's 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 people and people may say oh, I tried this I tried that it didn't work because work. We're into this instantaneous fix. The big thing with sleep is that there is a delay between me adhering to a process and me getting the results. Mm -hmm. um, so you need to retrain the systems to sleep, move things gently out of the way for the sleep to happen. Because many people who come to me don't have any sleep issues, they have lifestyle choice issues. And um, that takes time to realign those things and for, for, for the sleep and it like in business it's an up and down journey good days bad days don't tamp down on the good days and don't get too down about i didn't sleep last night so zoom out focus on the basics and a, a tablet won't switch you off or a supplement it's it is about ramping down that activity so many people do a lot right and then they go to bed and their mind is that cognitive um problem solving thing is still awake and searching for answers and and the amazing thing is this if we if we ramp down activity properly the, the sleep is the subconscious mind the subconscious mind will actually find the solution mm. to the problem we're having if you if you ramp down activity properly and you wake up the next day and go sleep on it right and boom i have it and how many people like tesla and you 
used to do this purposely. Yeah. They used to to find the solutions. So. Is, well, we're kind of wired to get the solutions just naturally if we just yeah leave it leave it. Yeah. What's your yeah. what's your view on things like electronic devices? You know, before bed, blue light. What's your view on that? So the mechanism. So let's talk about kind of mechanistically. The the, the blue light will shut down melatonin production in the brain. Mm-hmm. Uh, it would stop the sleep hormone working. So the light is the smaller issue, I feel. Mostly people are aware of that. They're not aware of the alerting process mm. and, and what it does to the brain. Um, it, 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 it keeps activity going in, in, in the prefrontal cortex, which is the problem-solving, planning, short-term memory. You'll have to do this tomorrow, move that around, go here. You know, that activity has to ramp down because sleep is complex. It's, it's, it's the physical side. It's the... Even the social side, you sleep with a partner, and um, psychological side, and then, like ultimately, it's brainwave activity. So what we have to do is ramp down brainwave activity, and 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 even instruct ourselves to do that. So that's uh, really important that we that we do that. And um, now, while the visual t- cortex is open, while we are looking at something like a device, our brainwave cannot shift into deeper alpha wave that's required to gain sleep. So sorry, the device, if you're looking at the device, it stops you moving into that alpha wave. Yes. It yeah. stop, we need to go from beta, which is yeah. active, active, to alpha, which is awake and relaxed, and then we go from alpha to theta wave. Yeah. And that won't happen as long as our eyes are open, essentially. And we're yeah. doing this alerting activity of social media. So the way, and that's why I don't mind people having the phone in the bedroom listening to music or a podcast or uh, relaxing sounds. But the, vi- the visual cortex is not then receiving information and having to process. So, you, Sorry, Tom, just, I'm just curious. Do, do you drink caffeine? Do you drink coffee or tea? Yes, I've I've switched. Um, I'm a huge coffee fan. I love my singularity coffee. I've got my fancy coffee machine. I've got every coffee machine known to man. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good to hear. So you're, 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 so you're yeah. like that. Right. So, so I, after what time would you drink a coffee? Just in um, minute sleep. My 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 cutoff is um, twelve o'clock in the day for coffee. Yeah. Okay. Right? Now I've actually transitioned fairly recently to um, he's holding up. He's holding up a very fancy looking, weird looking beaker here with the silver with a metal straw. Right? Yes. So that's your that's yerba mate tea. Um, I think Leo Messi in the Argentinian South American thing they made it famous. So it's okay. so very. Now, yerba mate tea is, uh, does contain caffeine, yeah. uh, also contains something called L-theanine, which is a sleep supplement. <laughs> oh, right. So it just naturally contains theanine. Now, we absorb the, the, the caffeine much kind of slow, uh, a slower and steadier pace with the yerba mate. And the yerba mate has a lot of antioxidants, okay. really uh, healthy for us. Now, coffee is not, coffee gets a bad rap. Coffee is good for your brain. It's yeah. protective. Yeah, so it's just how much and how often you're drinking it. Sorry, so, this, this tea, and I won't even try to pronounce. We we'll put it in the show notes yeah. again afterwards. But that tea, you so you're saying you drink that in the afternoon because obviously you're drinking it there. Yeah, well, I, I'd have I'd have one. I, I I may or may not have one cup. Maybe I have three or four cups of coffee now over the course of the week. Whereas you know, in my twenties, I was having six or eight cups a day. Right. Wow. <laughs> so <laughs> um, now I've transitioned to where I'll have either two yerba mates uh, for, the, for the day uh, or I'll have one coffee and one yerba mate. And that, uh, that element that affects you, that improves your sleep, that doesn't obviously make you drowsy clearly during the day. No, it doesn't. It kind of, the yerba mate, it kind of counteracts the, the caffeine. So it's a much, it's okay. a much lighter, you, you get the, you get the benefit of the concentration and focus, but it's not the jitteriness of the caffeine with the, with the coffee. Yeah. It's the, you get a calmness with it, which is, which is ideal. So I found myself more and more being drawn towards the yerba mate. I get up, I'll, I'll start work immediately. I'll have a yerba mate and I find that my concentration levels are excellent. Um, I don't have the jitteriness associated with the uh, caffeine. So make sure that we're leaving sufficient time because it takes about eight hours for half of it to, to be eliminated by the body and the brain. Okay. And in relation to a sideways movement of that into supplements around sleep, would you ever encourage or do you take any supplements to help you sleep yourself? I have. I take uh, magnesium on a regular basis. Magnesium biglycinate is the form because magnesium citrate does nothing for sleep. Magnesium biglycinate or glycinate helps relax nerve impulse 
Um, is, that, is, that, is that a powder? Is it a drink? What is it? It's a uh, tablets. You can get like I can even recommend brand Mag three six five. Oh yeah, uh, yeah, that's well known. Yeah. Um, so that's fine. That helps calm the nervous system. And uh, most people are deficient in magnesium anyway, but eighty percent. So we need to be getting more of it. And hmm. um, I would also have in my locker L-theanine. So L-theanine is an is a, is an amino acid. You won't get detrimental side effects. I have that in case I say I'm very busy. Maybe I've missed out. Maybe tomorrow I've got a very busy day ahead and I think, gosh, I really want a good sleep tonight. Yeah. Um, and if I kind of need a guarantee, that's it. I'll take, I'll take some L-theanine and boom, I'll have it. I don't, it's not something I take every night at all. I might, I might only take it once a month, you know. Where would you get that? Is that a pharmacy? Is that a health food shop? It's a, a health food shop. should be able to get it in a good health food shop. I also recommend Viridian do a nice one, do a very good one. Um, so that's something that I have. Um, in my locker, definitely uh, for, for sleep. And it helps calm the nervous system because we talk about, you mentioned stress, and that's huge. So many of the products, whether it be medications, whether it be mm. whatever, they're all kind of pushing towards uh, ramping down activity in the nervous system. And then yeah. the sleep happens. The sleep happens. It's not as though they're pressing a magic sleep button in your head. Mm. Okay. Okay. We're, we're kind of running out of time here, Tom, unfortunately, right? Because I could, there's probably loads of questions I know I could ask you. But in terms of organizations and, you know, leaders being open to this kind of thing, because I mean, obviously, look, with my work, I'm helping them. We, we'd have a similar mission, I think, which is basically you're trying mm -hmm. to improve people's well being. And I think you're also trying to improve it in the context of helping people perform performance. Yeah. Know? the organization in the work lives, the work and the personal lives. And I think, you know, a lot of what you're saying, I would relate to because, but I, 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 I'm very interested in, in your expertise. But what I'm wondering is, for me, a lot of the models that are, are around in business are kind of out of date, but not fit for purpose mm -hmm. for the current age. Now, clearly listening to you, um, I think most people, I think, are struggling with getting, getting a hold even on their health and their sleep. Yeah. Right? And all the connected areas. What I'm wondering is, are organizations, are you finding them open to getting into this in a way that you're happy with, that you can actually make meaningful change? Or, and I'm going to be controversial here, or mm. it's just a HR box tick. Let's get a guy in to do a talk about sleep um, because we have to kind of do something that's, you know, seen to be doing yeah. the right thing. But we're not really getting into the meat of helping people transform mm. their sleep and their health and go back to where we started, like overall yeah. health. Yeah. What's your view on um, that? My view on that is what I've seen in the last few years is I've seen organizations hop on trends. Yeah. I've seen organizations go, this is trendy. Oh, we get this in. Now, obviously, COVID was a game changer. And they had to respond to, to you know, a, a huge demand there for, for, say, mental health services and, and resilience and, and, and stuff like that. But I see uh, things will come become trendy. And organizations will jump on and go, grab a guy, get him in there, talk about that, tick that box. So, like, I really agree with with that. Um, I, I really hope that um, more organizations are looking at, you know, their full year and going, right, how can we mm. build things in here that will help everyone, really, that will, that will keep, you know, retention. Uh, you know, they care about their people. People that and I, I kind of know this pretty quickly when, I, when organizations come to me, they're looking for a 45 minute talk. That's it, great, Tom. Here's yeah. your check, bye bye. Yeah. Or are they very serious um, yeah. about it? And again, in my work, I say that sleep is like a barometer to see how well you're doing you're doing in life, mm. right? And I say, you know, well, if you fix your sleep, all your life will be good. But really, it's kind of the other way around. If I'm honest, it's kind of. <laughs> Is kind of sort the stress out, sort your boundaries out, sort your work life balance out, get more exercise, and the sleep will, 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 will come, you know. And that's where I really have kind of changed my approach, even with organizations to say, look, how about we do this instead? How about we, we give people the, the, the practical tools to, to reduce stress, to strengthen uh, communication and connection, to, to do all these other things? And, and yeah, of course, I can cover the sleep. Yes. But, and it's almost like um, you're in a sauna and the thermostat is saying it's, it's, it's 100. 
and and people go, you need to lower the temperature. That you need to lower that temperature. You know, yeah. without actually doing anything about the heat. So, you know, you know, so what you're saying is, you, you know, you're not looking at the cause. You're looking yeah. more almost the symptom in a way. And actually, if you go back to the fundamentals where we started, it'll kind of look after itself. So it's kind of trying to get organizations to work, to be open to look. It's not just yeah. a quick, quick short term approach. It's right. like taking you know, a kind of a systemic, yeah, approach to the organization. To well, to, to well, authentic, authenticity. My whole drive in, in recent years is that there is a better way of doing things. There's a better yeah. way of living. There's yeah. a better way of, you know, and I think we all recognize that because we get caught up in technology with, with COVID, with, with everything. It's like a perfect storm for anxiety and stress. Yeah. And we kind of know deep in ourselves. And the question that I sort of put out there was like, would you teach your child to do what you do, to live how you live, you know? Um, so there is there is a better way. That's probably the perfect way to live, to leave this one, to live and to leave. Uh, there's a better way. So, Tom, we, we'll pause it there for now. I've no doubt that Brilliant. I'll probably have you back again at some point, maybe to continue the conversation. But there's lots there for people to digest. If people want to get more information about you, where do we direct them to? Um, my website is tomcoleman.ie and indeed my Instagram, the same, tomcoleman.ie. It's, it's easy to find me. Oh, it's spelled Coleman, though, for non-Irish people. Uh, C. O L E M A N. C O L E M A N M A N. And we'll put that into the show notes as well. All right, Tom, listen, thank you very much. That was brilliant. Shane, it's a real pleasure as always. Thank you very much for having me. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that. I certainly got a lot out of it. And I'm going to go back again and listen to this because there was nuggets all over the place. For me, I think what I like about Tom's approach is just what he said pretty much at the beginning which is he wants to demystify health and sleep for people because there's no doubt about it in the age we're living in that there's so much information out there that sometimes it's just it's so easy to get confused as to what's right what's what's a fad what's meaningful and i loved kind of halfway through when he was talking about look we've just forgotten to go back to the basics and we have to stop trying to think our way out of it and also we just need to stop looking for a fast solution or a tablet and I just loved what you were saying about the importance of being outside, outside light, disconnecting from the mind, and essentially, as he said, to retrain the systems, the natural systems in us all, that once we do that, that sleep is just a natural consequence. And he said at one point, you know, that a lot of his clients, he doesn't think they really have sleep issues. What they have are lifestyle choice issues. And that is, I think that's very true. That's what I see in myself. It's a very good way of saying that sleep issues versus lifestyle choice issues. And, you know, I suppose what struck me is he was talking about zooming out, just kind of getting out of the minutia of it. And even in terms of that conversation discussion around the tracker, um, I'm going to put in the in the show notes, just talking to Tom afterwards, he suggested the best thing to do is to email him. I'm going to put his email in the show notes. Um, but it's, it is Thomas J. Coleman, I'll, you know, T-O-M-A-S-J Coleman, C-O-L-E-M-A-N at gmail.com. I'll put it in the show notes. And his um, his website anyway is Tom Coleman, C O L E M A N, Tom Coleman .ie. and we put that. He said contact him if you're interested in finding out more about the NASA tracker. And he said look, you have to buy them in bulk. So if there's enough people, perhaps maybe you're one of the people that will um, maybe help him approach the guys who sell it, and uh, you can have a conversation directly with them. Very interesting. I'm going to be exploring that myself. Um, and then the last bit of just again, it's just again something that I, I suppose resonated with me particularly because I can see this with organizations at times when they are looking at, you know, the well-being of their teams. And it's not universal, but I have to say, I think it's the majority. It's certainly over 80% of organizations very much hop on trends. And it's just often a tick box exercise to get someone like Tom to come in, talk about sleep. Whereas really, I think there's an opportunity here to redefine, reshape organizations, not just around sleep, but around how do we get the best out of people and support them in a meaningful way that's sustainable? You know, sustainability is often talked about really in relation to the environment, which is great. But what about us people in it, in the environment? I just think that's where sustainability has to go with organizations so that people can make um, a sustainable difference to their work and their lives. That's really where the opportunity is. And I guess it's people like Tom. That's why I suppose I'm trying to help even spread his message, because for me, it lines up with what I'm trying to do as well. So I hope you got a lot out of it. To me, it's the kind of episode that you could go, you could go back and um, listen to again. And whatever podcast platform you're listening to on this, check out the show notes. I will be adding in some 
of my own little uh, summarization points, if that's a word, and some of the contact details as mentioned. Other than that, if you could like, share, um, and maybe subscribe to the podcast if you haven't already, it helps just with my own reach and trying to try to make a difference. Uh, the inner CEO, um, as I'm re- recording this, has just got back into the top 10 in Ireland, which is amazing. Still blows my mind, but I really appreciate the support and uh, any details on the book if you're interested. The inner CEO.com. It's available all over the world. Um, you can find it in Irish bookstores, or you can get it direct from me, or you can get it on Amazon. That's it for this week's. This week's? Right, whatever. Anyway, have a good one. Ciao.